welcome back to the man cave. So I've just got this engine back from the machine shop. I'm gonna go ahead and put it together and put it in my truck. So we've had the block, they bored the cylinders, they installed new cam bearings, they installed new freeze plugs, new oil galley plugs. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this engine assembly lube now one of the things that you got to be sure you do is just make sure that you stay clean and keep everything as clean as you possibly can. So we're going to put a little bit of this assembly lube down in each of these cam bearings. I'm going to grab a light so I can actually see something. And then we'll just reach in here and kind of make sure that we've got lube in all of the bearings. This will help so that we have the lubrication that we need. Might need to put this a little more in some of these. I don't mind using plenty of engine lubrication so that we don't have a lot of friction at startup brand new bearings and everything just got just to soon make sure that we've got plenty of assembly lube in this to make sure that we Now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to install this camshaft. Now I want to do this now because I can control both sides of the camshaft as I go through the bearings. You can do this with just the front of the camshaft, but it is a little bit more difficult. So I'm just as soon do it right now while I've got this. Little bit of space where I can work. Now that camshaft is installed. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some assembly lube on all of these camshaft lobes. Now the camshaft is what controls the valves and the valves are in the cylinder heads and they are what control the flow of air into the engine I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there we'll just make sure to get these cam lobes lubricated Now this particular engine has roller rockers in it, the roller lifters in it, I mean, and that kind of helps to keep the camshaft from getting the friction against the lifters, but I just would prefer to make sure that I get lubrication on everything anyways. All right, so now, We are going to look up the specifications. I've got my computer here so that we can find torque specifications. If I can get it to turn on. And so we've got the camshaft thrust plate here that we're going to put on next. And if you look, you can see that it has a mark that says back and bottom. That means that this goes back in the engine and towards the bottom. And the torque specification on this thrust plate is 9 to 12 foot-pounds. So we're going to install this thrust plate here, back and bottom. So it'll go just like this. And 
We'll put these bolts in it. And then we're going to set our torque wrench. At nine foot wrench. Sip this one will do nine. It will. So we'll spin this up till we get to let's see, we're gonna go to twelve, which is right there. And then we're gonna torque these bolts down. All right, so now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the main bearings. Now the main bearings go in here in the main journals of the engine. Now, I really like to keep things clean. So I'm going to make sure and wipe this down. Now, the main bearings come in two different pipes and one of them has a hole in it and that hole goes down towards these oil holes so that it so that it can oil now this tab is what keeps this bearing in the right location so we're going to start by putting all of the lower main bearings in. And we've got them all down so that the oil can oil the crankshaft like it's supposed to. Now these kind of snap into place. Then when we torque the caps down, they will um, hold themselves in place. Now, we are going to put some assembly lube on each of these. Now if you notice, this bearing right here is different. This is what they call a thrust bearing. And it, what it does is it keeps the crankshaft from moving too far back and forth. So we're gonna put this lube around a little bit to make sure we've got everything lubricated well. And then, we are going to install the crankshaft. And I've got the crankshaft over here tied up so that it won't try and fall down. We need to make sure that we leave these standing up. They try and warp if you lay them down. Now, going to carefully set this crankshaft in this engine block. We're going to put some assembly lube on the main journals. So a crankshaft sits in the engine block and it controls the pistons. So we have main journals, which is where I'm putting this lube. And we have rod journals which connect the connecting rods, which connect to the pistons. And now that we've got all that set up, we're gonna start putting bearings into our main caps and installing our main caps on the engine. Now again, these have locating tabs 
so that the bearing sets where it's supposed to set. And these tabs are always going to go towards each other. Now what we're going to do here, these have numbers and marks on them. So if you look, you can see that this one is marked number one and it's got an arrow facing forward. So we're going to grab the next one. We're going to install the bearing. Number two, facing forward. Run these down so that they're snug. Now, number three, if you look, you can see that this cap is built differently than these other caps. And that is because this holds the thrust bearing. And like I said, the thrust bearing has these edges on it to keep the crankshaft from moving excessively back and forth. Number three, pointing forward. Now, look and notice that this bolt is different than the other bolts. That is because this holds the pickup tube for the oil pump. Number four, facing forward. Number five is the back bearing, and this one does not have a mark on it. However, you can tell by looking at it that this goes towards the back. This is where the rear main seal goes on this engine, right in this groove right here. And that keeps the oil inside of the engine. Now, on some of the older engines, they're going to have a two-piece rear main seal. And if this were to have a two-piece rear main seal, we would have to install that rear main seal right now in order to be able to get it in there. However, since this is a one-piece seal, we can drive it in from the back later. Now, we need to look up the torque specifications for the main bearing bolts. So we're going to go back over here to the computer and we are going to look up main bearing caps and they are between 95 and 105 foot pounds. So we are going to set this torque wrench So there's a hundred right there. You can see that the line marks up with a hundred and the zero marks up with this line. And then we are going to start torquing these. And then I like to spin the crankshaft just a little bit so that I make sure that we've got a still good rotating engine assembly. Okay, I'm going to go back and check them all. A couple of them moved just a little bit. Which makes me really happy that I rechecked them all. Now, I'm always going to set my torque wrench back to zero. 
so that we don't compress the spring. We've got all the main bearings torqued down, crankshaft moves freely, which is a very good sign. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the timing chain. Now this is a dual roller timing chain, which means that it has two chains that are hooked together. It also has two sprockets that are connected together. And this is what keeps the crankshaft and the camshaft timed together. So in order to set this up, I am going to turn this engine up like this so that I can see things just a little better. And the first thing that we're going to do, now if you'll notice, this sprocket is much bigger than this sprocket. Actually, it's twice the size. If you were to count the teeth on this camshaft sprocket, it would be exactly twice as many teeth as this crankshaft sprocket. All right, so we're gonna put this crankshaft and camshaft sprocket so that these little dots right here are facing each other. I have put the crankshaft keyway pointing up and the locating pin on the camshaft pointing down. And if you look, you can see how that's supposed to go. Now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the crankshaft sprocket on first and we'll slide that on and we'll keep sliding it in until we get located. Get the camshaft sprocket put on. And you can see that these two dots are aiming towards each other. Now we're going to put the camshaft bolt in. And I'm just gonna use this bar to kind of hold this in place. Maybe while I torque this down. Now, I'm going to move everything back just to double check our timing marks. And there they are. I'm going to show you guys something really quickly that I forgot to show you a little earlier. So we're going to turn this engine back over. And we're going to look down through this and I'm going to show you guys why I installed the camshaft before I installed the crankshaft. If you look, I can't even get my hands down in here any longer because the crank, with the crankshaft in here, I can't get to the camshaft. Now you can install those camshafts with, that, with the crankshaft in place, but it's just much easier to do if the crankshaft is not here.